this video I'm going to explain how to do BAT uh, applying different examples. I left my email address as a box below, so if you want a copy of this model, feel free to get in touch. And I'm doing some videos about Simul8 and the playlist. So, what they are really trying to do here, work center A does not start, which is that one here. Does not work in batch, does not start until it has two items ready to be manufactured. So all what you have to do is double click here, rooting in, and then click here on. So we click here on collect two items and we click on assemble. So if someone would ask me like what's the difference between all of those? So all what we need to do is to open the help and collect option. Do not collect until all is available. Tell the activity not to collect any of the required work until all of them are available. As this one is usually with matching. So you do matching, match and batch. So the second one is matching, but this one was identical label content. So for example, uh, which of the entities or the products they have a certain attribute so you collect them based on this attribute concerning assemble you batch them permanently so the units are matched and batched so whenever the two units are ready and you assemble them you batch them so if you do the assembly line system there are different options concerning the time and system so the first collected, the first enlist, the youngest, the last one, and the value now when they are all ready. So meaning what? What time the first unit has gotten to the system or the last one? So it will be, I will give an example. If there are two units, you need to batch them permanently. But one arrived at nine and one arrived at half past nine and you batch them at half past nine. So in a way you could say the time of production started or the step after the batching is half past nine instead of nine okay if you always come back to this and try example so here you batch you wait for them till they're here again rooting in and you assemble them permanently any two of the arriving one as you could see here literally any two you assemble them okay so and when you finish here on the routing out batching so batch size leaving the object is one so what's happening here you batching them at the first and you okay and you separate them at the end because you're sending them one at a time at the end of the system so if you run this model just to double check a few things so i'm gonna make it faster so literally we have, sorry, let me just reset this model. So we've got here graphics, because I would like to see the number of unit leaving that system. So we have graphics, we're gonna count them, how many leaving that system, and let's run it again. So we have 25 units leaving the system, there's still one in the system and 24. So we batch them, and then we separate them at the end. How do we separate them? By doing the routing out, uh, batching value back at one. The next example I want to demonstrate, okay, if the next example, we're collecting five items at a time and we are, we, do not collect until all available. So you don't process the system, nothing work until all of them are available. In this system as well, if you look at this, when we're routing out, we're sending them as one. So that means like you're batching them and you separate at the end, meaning you're not keeping them as a batch. So you're splitting them at the end, okay? The third example, which is more advanced, we're batching by type, meaning what? Literally, we're considering now we have three different products entering a system, as you can see here, product one, product two, product three. You tell me how we define the different product. We have product one, we define the label routing is equal to one or two or three, and 
we apply the image we want with the image tool. Okay, I'm doing a video about image in a second in the playlist. So when they go to the work center, you literally routing in priority option batch by type. You're letting only the value three to get into the system. Okay, based on the routing. What does that mean? Let's run it and then see it properly. So if we have gonna make it slower. So we have only the yellow they're getting through while here we have blue, black and yellow are heading into the system. So only the yellow are getting through the system. So in a way we are collecting the one we want into the system. Okay, we're picking the one we want, not all of them, we're letting them through the system, as you can see here. The one on the top is yellow and the one at the bottom is blue. Okay, the last example, which is the most important one, so we have, um, so we have to start with, we have all the palette here at the start of the program. So the startup, we have eight palettes ready in the system. Okay, empty palettes, and we have the product coming, and we need to combine both of them, the product and the palette. One. And the easiest way to do this, we do routing in. Watch this, which is extremely important at the top. So we specified we only want one, not two, not three as before, just one product. But the difference here, we're combining the component store with a palette store. We're combining the component store with a palette store is extremely important so we have the product plus the palette we're putting them all in one as we did here we're combining them okay and so they're being processed in the system and when they get at the end at unload palette so we have the circulate work palette but this is not important here what's important is this one so that's the size leaving the object is two so there are two leaving the system which is the component itself and the palette. Because when you're selling it, you're not selling it as combined. So you're putting the palette back into the palette store. Okay. So if you have any question related to this, please let me know. So I'm gonna recap really, really, really quickly what I did. So the first one we did batching. And batching here, I'm gonna show you like really quick. So you did batching and you assembled them. So any two entities from the start, literally any two entities from the queue before from the store and you batch them as you assemble them into one okay but when you get at the end you split them and you did we did this by doing at the end fixed value is one so we separate them at the end so the second one we did five of them okay but the difference between this one and the first one here we assemble them. Here we've not started until all of them are available. Okay. If we haven't clicked this one assemble, meaning what? So we have like a group of five, we're sending them to the system. But assemble them, they will be processed once. Whenever you click on assemble, they will be processed as one product, as if you're putting a product into a package. Okay. But when it finishes at the end, we split them again. So the fact we put here one, which means we separate them. Okay. Batch by type here, literally what we did, we have, we'll show you again. So we have different labels as an action, image and routing as one, two, three, one, two, three with different colors. And I'm going to explain this in a separate uh, exercise. And when we picked here at the work center, routing and option batching. Okay, so not this one. So routing in, and we have here the option for batch by type, which is details. So we select the use fix value, we select the routing in here. Okay, and the last one, which is very important. So we have the palette at the start of the program. The palettes are already there by doing start up eight of them, and we're putting product on the palette here is very very important so we have assemble do not collect at all available so the product and palette are available we assemble them into one we count we want one of each and then we process them and then unloading we separate them 
but the difference here we separate them into two so they're where they're sending out of the system as two. okay so we put the palette store back in its place and we send the product out. 